threatened on camera repeatedly. It's on the CBC. No charges in the press. Who's in trouble? The Halifax Five are in trouble. They can get fired from their jobs. From, uh, it looks like, in any case, they're going to be disarmed. Can you want to arm wrestle this guy? Yeah, we were supposed to arm wrestle, but he didn't, uh, he didn't follow up. I mean, like, what's up, man? How are you doing, brother? Good to see you again. Smile, Kevin. Look, it's Ronnie, yo. Ben, I'll go to love with you, buddy. Find out the truth, because there is this gigantic, gigantic, and I can't believe this happens in Canada, media propaganda campaign against them. And the only way to, to get around it, the only way to find out the truth, is to actually watch the video evidence, then read the articles again, and, and see what you think of them. And see what you think of the media of this country, especially the publicly funded media, which is really not supposed to be doing this kind of thing. Um, now, we have uh, a very good lineup of speakers here. I'm going to probably elaborate on some of those issues, I think. First, coming up to give you a few words is uh, BJ Ditcher from LGB Tory. Give a big round of applause to BJ Ditcher. Bueller. Uh, oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Hey. What's up, man? Hey, how are you doing, man? Good. Excellent. Hey, bud. I checked Nathan Phillips, no answer for there. No one there. Right. Something a little more, I don't know, affordable. Uh, uh, Thank you. Thank you. And proud of you guys that put together an event not less than a couple of weeks ago with Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson. Clearly, clearly those people are white supremacists and Right. <laughs> There's something that's alarming that I've heard repeatedly, and so many practical people, centrists, are unaware of. And it's called the progressive stack. Does everybody here know what that is? Okay, one person. The progressive stack is a hierarch hierarchical structure of which people, according to the neo-progressives on the extreme left, are allowed to speak. This is based exclusively on their gender, on their race, their identity. This is the most illiberal principle that we have seen in our liberal democracy. It's the inverse of a liberal democracy because it allows the minority control over the majority. It's veiled communism. That's what these people are selling. And I understand the apprehension many people have in engaging in this conversation because most people do not want to be dragged into this mess. But there's a very famous proverb from one of the Greek philosophers, I can't remember which one, so pardon me, which is, you may not take an interest in politics, but that doesn't mean politics won't take an interest in you. And that's what's happening today. Hold on, I wrote down a couple of things on the way here I wanted to mention. It's okay, we got lots of time, right? Yes. Where's the keg or where's the drinks? Where's the party? <laughs> With regards to Halifax, I don't personally know the motivation of the five that showed up. And I also can understand how some people deem it insensitive. I get that. That doesn't mean they are evil. That doesn't mean they don't have a, value, a valid opinion and are not entitled to a table at the debate. That's what freedom of speech fosters, which is dialogue and communication across the political spectrum. And that's right now what is at risk. And that's what our current government has been bringing to our country. One of the things that's at risk right now and we see in the social justice tribunal is one of the most fundamental principles 
of any liberal democracy. And that is the presumption of innocence. That's what is so at stake right now. And that should be so painfully obvious to just about anybody. But it's amazing how many people can fall victim to fallacious arguments and smears. You can clap if you want. <laughs> Woo! The last thing is, I think we all need to be skeptical of those who pull the victimization card today. Today, in this country, where we are all protected under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, something that was just used to bribe a terrorist, that's how protected we all are. I'm somebody who has lived in one of the most dangerous countries in the world. And I have looked down the odds of narcotraficantes, as they're called, the drug cartels, mm. people who have decimated civilization. Come on. Those are countries where there really is oppression, where there really are victims, where there are children in the street selling chiclets at the age of five and who will be prostitutes by the age of 15. That is not Canada. That is not the reality of where we live today. This extremist nonsense on the left needs to stop and stop now. We are all sensitive to the narrative that there are people who hold extremist views on the right. I may not be a visible minority, which puts me much farther down on the progressive stack, hmm. but I do come from a society of people who were slaughtered in ovens, foremost my family. So we understand the risks of extremism. But right now, the extremists on the right are the fringe. They're not something we need to worry about. The extremists are on the left, and they are the mainstream, and they need to be stopped now. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing is that this debate over the flag, how any flag of Canadian heritage is in any way associated with Nazism? What is this nonsense? Yeah. 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 This is not media. These are people who are activists. Yep. They are not journalists, and they are propagandizing our society. Mm. All Canadian heritage needs to be respected, including all of our flags of the past. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.